Kenyans are waking up to the smell of coffee. Demand for the mighty beans is increasing steadily. Coffee has driven Kenya's foreign currency earnings for decades. Its quality creates demand around the world. Today, more Kenyans are turning to hot drinks, coffee and tea. We have had more of uh, uh, local consumption uh, as opposed to growing uh, more of uh, external consumption for many reasons. Now, one major reason why the local consumption of these uh, two beverages, uh, be they uh, coffee, uh, tea, is because we are growing our population. Number two is that it's actually almost cultural. We are coming to a situation where it's almost Kenyan to take tea, it's almost Kenyan to take coffee, so they have issues about symbols of our national pride. The culture of coffee consumption is growing in coffee producing countries. Kenya is no exception. We've just uh, done a, a survey, a domestic consumer survey for Kenya, to establish facts which over time we've uh, alluded to. Uh, it's surprising that uh, the survey results are quite close to the real position, the real uh, figures we've used in the past, uh, confirming that about 5% of the coffee produced is actually consumed in Kenya. But what also the survey results did indicate is that most of the coffee being consumed is uh, the instant coffees, which are robusta. Of course, Kenya, you know, we produce the Arabica type. Since 1999, I think that is when I will say probably coffee, we started moving into coffee culture. That time we were so much in tea culture, of course. And we say that is when many of our coffee uh, our stakeholders came up actually opening up coffee shops. And also at that rate, I think coffee consu consumption was not very much. I think people are so much in tea again. Uh, but I'd say at that time, I'll see a good uh, uh, uptown coffee, coffee shop, maybe doing about maybe 250 cups a day. Um, and uh, we've been able to come, I think, you know, the, the, the growth of coffee consumption has been very rapid. I'll say maybe based on also very good, well-articulated kind of coffee workshops, I'll say. There are some that, that happen around uh, here in Nairobi. And to date, I think the consumption has gone up tremendously high. I'll say even doing even a thousand cups in a day. Last year, tea earned Kenya 97 billion shillings in foreign earnings. Domestic demand is growing too. The more moving tea are the, the green teas. The green teas have so many things in, in common in terms of health and so many things that accompany them. Because if you sell the, the normal tea and the green teas are the ones that we sell most even in, in terms of export. The growth in African markets is likely to change the patterns in the soft commodity market. Actually, the, the growth uh, in, in consumption is, is actually happening in the developing world, not, not in the developed world. In the developed world, we have seen uh, uh, tea consumption uh, declining. So we're seeing growth in places like Egypt, Pakistan, uh, in Sudan, in, uh, in, you know, and so on. And even in, uh, in our own local market, we've seen uh, you know, growth in, in tea consumption. But you see, our population is still uh, relatively small. And therefore, the kind of uh, per capita uh, figures that we see in the, in the Arab world or in the Middle East are not the kind of figures that we see here. We have had similar problems on sugar, uh, where we have more sometimes, you know, people wonder about the Commonwealth, the regional blocks and all those kind of issues. Where sometimes a sovereignty issue comes in, do we, we are in a dilemma, do we want to, um, do we want to export? Do we want uh, to, uh, to based on the local market? Now, those decisions, unfortunately, they are hampered by very weak uh, legal uh, frameworks that seem to allow people called auctioneers, you know, sort of middlemen, uh, the brokers and what have you, to see whatever the potential is. Like now, it appears to be very lucrative uh, to try and um, export. Be with a weak shilling, it appears to be very uh, lucrative for people when control. But when it's about now a question of uh, consuming locally, then the capacity of the, people, the power of the people to spend, the economic power, seems to have been suppressed. In, under those circumstances, of course, the people who have now control. This year, average global prices of coffee have hit a 34-year high driven by rising demand but local farmers are yet to see the benefits. The Javas, the Domans who are serving coffee are not only buying the coffee from the auction, but they are also employing Kenyans. They are also paying uh, taxes. They are also promoting other industries. 
the dairy industry, the sugar industry. So for me, there's a multiplier effect, actually value addition when we do coffee shops internally. So we'll, only, we, we'll pay back our farmers for the coffee produce, but then we'll create much more wealth within. So it's a value creation aspect. Tea, on the other hand, has suffered some difficult weather conditions affecting supply to world markets. But with all these factors, the future of Kenyan tea and coffee market lies in Kenya itself.